Okay, all right. Well, greetings, everybody. All right, welcome to Table Talk Friday night. Uh, we're Covenant Life Church and Apostle Jeff and Linda Herbert. We want to thank you for joining us tonight. Amen. And uh, before we get started, we'll, we'll go ahead and just give a word of, word of prayer. And you want to do that, Jeff? Sure. Okay. So, Lord, we bless you and thank you for this night, for this time together, for the Holy Spirit's anointing, this presence of God in our lives, for all the things that you've done for us, Lord. And, Lord, you, you're protecting us from this coronavirus. Amen. And, Lord, you're going to protect us from economic hardships and all the things that are going on in this world today. And we give you praise and honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we just want to welcome you tonight. And as I said, we're Covenant Life Church and we're ordained by Bishop Bill Hammond. And we want to thank you for joining us for the Friday Table Talk. And tonight, Apostle Jeff is going to give uh, something on intensified de determination, which I think you'll, you'll find quite fascinating. And uh, I just want to say before we get started, uh, if you've never seen us be, but before, we just want to invite you to our website. It's www.covenant-life-church.org. Right. And we've got all of our Facebooks loaded mm -hmm. uh, up there uh, on our website. We also have audios from uh, previous conferences and sermons and various things. So you'll, you'll find it. Uh, there's all, all kinds of stuff there. It's all uh, free and you can uh, go, go ahead and double click in, into anything and, and hear sermons. So we, we just want to thank you for, for joining us tonight. Amen. And I'm just getting, uh, I'm just feeling led right off the bat. If anybody's tuning in tonight and they don't know Jesus as their personal Savior, we yes. always want to give you the opportunity to accept Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the most important thing. You know, knowing where you go, where you're going to spend eternity, that's what it's all about. A amen. No matter how many gifts of spirit you have or whatever, or whoever you are, it all boils down to do you know Jesus. Amen. 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 So. I just want to invite you right now, in case anybody's listening uh, and just happen to be uh, uh, passing by, amen, we just want to say the sinner's prayer and just invite you to, ex to accept Jesus, amen. So it's just a really, really simple prayer. You just say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and forgive me my sins. I want to live for you from this moment on. And those of you who would like to rededicate your, your life, that also is a very simple prayer. Just it just re requires confession from the mm -hmm. mouth and, and believing in, in your heart. Yeah, it's Amen. Thing, faith in your heart. Amen. Amen. And so it's a very simple prayer again. You just say, Lord Jesus, I want to rededicate my, my life tonight. I'm sorry for the things that I've done. Please come into my heart and forgive me my, my sins in Jesus' name. Amen. And that's how simple it all is. Amen. So with that, we're going to turn it over to Apostle Jeff, and we want to thank, thank you for joining us tonight. Amen. Well, tonight I, was, uh, I wanted to talk about... Uh, intensifying our determination. Uh, the Lord has been showing me uh, lately that the adversary is intensifying his attacks. I think just a cursory view of the news makes it very clear uh, the spiritual and financial trouble uh, that our nation is in and the, and the troubles and difficulties and challenges we're going through. I can't recall a time when it's been rougher in our country than it is right now. Amen. I mean, even during the Vietnam uh, mm -hmm. War time frame, which I was alive for, uh, I didn't see the country in this much turmoil and this much, uh, this much confusion as we see right now. And so I wanted to remind the Covenant Life Church of one of the scriptures, or the scripture, uh, that's over our church. It's even on our banner, our church banner. It says, Arise, shine, <clears throat> for your light has come. Amen. It's not going to come. Your light has come. Amen. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Are you listening? The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. Notice the earth is going to be dark yeah. because of the spiritual opposition in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And then it says deep darkness is going to come upon the people. 
But the Lord, now get this, but, I like buts in the, in the, yeah. in the scripture, yeah. but the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light and the kings to the brightness of your rising. So in this dark time, as Christians, we need to arise because his glory is upon us. We need to let the light of God shine from us. The only thing that's going to bring order to chaos is the Holy Spirit and the love of Christ through his church. Because everything else is just getting too out of hand. Mm -hmm. And so we need help as individuals, as a church, as a nation. We need help. Lord, Father, please Amen. send help from the sanctuary Amen. for our country, Amen. for our church, for our people. Lord, you're a good and loving God, merciful and compassionate, yes, willing to forgive. Lord, forgive us our sins mm -hmm. and our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us. Mm -hmm. And let us not come into temptations and trials and tests, but deliver us from this evil. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So I'd like you to open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Are you, were you there already? Uh, no, I'm done just right now. Oh, I see. I wasn't sure right where you're going. Well, it's right here, dear. You yeah. can. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so anyway, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 8 and 9. Mm -hmm. But I will tarry in Ephesus until Pentecost. For a great and effective door has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. Mm -hmm. Paul was staying at Ephesus until Pentecost. He knew by the timing and the circumstances he was in to stay there. Mm -hmm. All right? And he said there was a great and effective door it opened for him. But along with that great open door, there were many adversaries. Mm -hmm. All right? So I believe yeah. in this time frame, as we come out of this COVID-19 thing, there's going to be great opportunities. Mm -hmm. Right in the midst of all this chaos and craziness, there's for God's people, there's going to be great opportunities. Mm -hmm. And saints, we don't want to miss opportunities. That's right. Some opportunities only come once in a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Don't walk past an open door. Knock and see what happens. God steers a moving car, so we have to be in motion by faith. Effective power is available. In other words, the opportunity is there right now. When the door opens, we must walk through it by faith. Now, the many adversaries. I, saints, opposition serves a purpose. Mm -hmm. it, not, it only strengthens us now, but it gets us ready for what's coming. See, God took the Israelites through the wilderness to teach them how to, to trust him, that he was their provider, that he would take care of them. He was trying to get them to trust him. You know, he delivered them from Egypt, but he couldn't get Egypt out of them. <laughs> yes. And I believe we have the same trouble. Mm -hmm. We've been delivered from the world and, and removed from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. But I believe sometimes there's just too much worldliness in us, all of us. Mm -hmm. I'm pointing a finger at myself as much as anybody. Uh, we have to understand that the opposition it first of all the devil's going to oppose you he has to he can't let you just walk around successful and let everybody see that all the christians are successful and everybody's not yeah. you know yeah mm -hmm. so the, the opposition they faced was to prepare them for the promised land the opposition that we're facing now is prepare us for the great blessings that are coming. 
So let's not miss the training. Amen. Because one thing with God, you don't fail a test, you just take it again. That's right. <laughs> so, There's no failure. No. So Amen. let's let's get it right the first time. Go around the mountain again. <laughs> Israel didn't just walk into the promised land. There were many things they had to learn first. Mm -hmm. Open doors of opportunity always attract opposition. Always. So some say, well, who needs an open door? Well, if you want to live a lackluster life stuck in your, your uh, lawn chair at home, well, you don't have to worry about open doors. Yeah. But if you want to grow and you want your life to improve and you want your family to be better off, then we better pay attention to the doors that God opens. Amen. Amen. And because there's a, an op a door that opens, there's automatically opposition to that, both in the demonic and in the natural. Mm -hmm. There's a natural opposition. Mm -hmm. You know, not everything's a demon. We must be ready to meet this opposition with an intensified determination. Everything good is hated by everything evil. Mm -hmm. Everything. Mm -hmm. Greatness is service to others. Mm -hmm. Jesus always ministered to the needs of others. In Mark 10, 43, he said, Let, Yet it shall not be so among you. He was teaching them about how the worldly rulers exercise power and authority and rule over people. And he, and he says, it will not be so among you, but whoever desires to become great among you shall be your servant. And whoever of you desires to be first shall be servant of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for being a servant. And so, we, if you would turn with me to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Mm -hmm. It's in a... If you have an anointed Bible, it's on page 1588. <laughs> yes. Do you have an anointed Bible? Yeah, let's you see. You sure do. There it is. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, right. 1588. Must have been one of the ones I gave you. Yeah, well, it was. Yeah, it's a... So 336 mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. so nice. anyway this is from the New Living Translation because I believe it makes it real clear what uh, what this scripture is trying to say mm -hmm. don't worry about anything yeah. <laughs> easier said than done yeah, no joke yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah. don't worry about anything instead pray about everything Amen. so that's your answer to worrying about everything that's right. If you're worried about something, pray about it till the worry goes away. Amen. That's right. Tell God what you need mm -hmm. and thank Him for all He has done. Mm -hmm. Then you'll experience God's peace, mm -hmm. which exceeds anything we can understand. Mm -hmm. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Now, notice it didn't say, we're not going to worry. We're going to pray about everything. Mm -hmm. But it says that the result of that is the peace of God. It didn't say the healing's going to come tonight. It doesn't say the financial breakthrough is going to be there. It doesn't say that, you know, the college you've applied to is going to receive, call you up tonight and tell you you got it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say that that prayer is going to be answered immediately. But it does say... Then you will experience God's peace, mm -hmm. which exceeds anything we can understand. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that, I, I, I get that. Mm -hmm. I don't know about myself, but I've seen God, guys that were just going through hell on earth. Mm -hmm. You know, I knew them personally, and mm -hmm. they were having problems in every area of your life that you can have problems in, serious mm -hmm. ones. But they were peaceful. They were calm. They, they had the joy of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And of course, those problems eventually they overcame. And, but in the meantime, they were peaceful and joyful. And I thought to myself, you know, that's, that's what I want to be like. I, I want to be just like that. 
And uh, one, of them, one of the people I'm thinking about is my, one of my old pastors, Buddy Ellison. Buddy just never did get upset about anything. Not mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. You know? And so I thought, you know, I want to be like he is. I'm going to go to the Bible school he went to. And I did. Mm -hmm. And while it was a blessing and it was great, that's not where the peace was. That's not where the joy was. What Buddy learned and what he taught me was you get your peace out of your prayer life and your relationship with God. You don't, you know, because circumstances are always going to change. Mm -hmm. I mean, who in January of this year thought this year was going to be like this? That's right, yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. I, I wish we could skip this year altogether and just go to 2021, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. But, you know, so notice this is about anxieties. Mm -hmm. We have to wait on God's answer, mm -hmm. his timing and help. So we might as well have peace in our hearts and minds while we do it. Mm -hmm. Notice your heart has to be guarded. Yeah. Not your head. Your head's the problem. <laughs> notice your heart has to be guarded. Mm -hmm. This is so emotions don't rule over your spirit, man. It's amazing how many things are done strictly on emotions. Strictly on emotions. Like today, uh, there was a fairly, a, a, there was an indication that employment, uh, unemployment rate was going down. It went down quite substantially today, according to the facts and figures. And the stock market went up almost 900 points. Mm -hmm. That's emotional. Okay, so two million people went back to work. Mm -hmm. We got 18 million to go. Yeah, amen. <laughs> so, you know, That's right. I'm not saying that isn't a good thing. And yeah. I'm not saying that doesn't mean the country's not on, on track or anything, or the economy is anyway. Mm -hmm. What I am saying is that's what drives the world, mm -hmm. is how it looks, how it feels, mm -hmm. what's in it for me. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the kingdom, we don't go by how we feel. I mean, I had a toothache the other day. I couldn't even come down here and be with Linda to minister. I mean, that was horrible, you know? But God got me through it. Amen. Amen. So, guard your hearts through this process that you find in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. That's how you guard your heart. Mm -hmm. well, don't try to guard your heart yourself. You can't. We're subject to circumstances and emotions like anybody else. We have one great advantage, and a great advantage it is, too. We can pray until we have the peace of God. Amen. Unbelievers can't do that, mm -hmm. but we can. Mm -hmm. Fear and intimidation have stopped many a man or woman of God. Yes, sir. Fear and intimidation. Mm -hmm. And intimidation is just another way of saying fear, really. Right, yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah the root of that right. is fear. Yeah, it's somebody, you know, if somebody's intimidating you, they're trying to make you think they can do something to you or mm -hmm. take something away from you, mm -hmm. and you get intimidated. Right? Right. So that's just fear. Mm -hmm. Fear and intimidation have stopped many a man or woman of God. Mm -hmm. Or I think the great, one of the best examples of that in the Bible is Elijah. You know, mm -hmm. he, he, he wiped out the prophets of Baal. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, his sacrifice was one of the biggest miracles in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Fire came down from heaven. Burned the sacrifice, burned the burned the altar, mm -hmm. burned up the, the mm -hmm. stones, and mm -hmm. even the water around the stones. Everything, yeah. Incinerated everything. Right. Well, I'll say one thing for the Israelites. After mm -hmm. seeing something like that, they had sense enough to say, <laughs> the Lord, he is God. The yeah. Lord, he is God. Yeah. And then they turned to God and, they, and yeah. did away with the uh, prophets of Baal. Mm -hmm. After that mighty act of power, mm -hmm. a threat from one woman, mm -hmm. Jezebel, mm -hmm. was enough to send the great man of God running. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
and he ended up in a cave. And saints, if you're going to give in to fear, plan to bring some clothes for a cave stay. Because <laughs> that's what's coming. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So we need to take time to listen to our spirit. Mm -hmm. Your spirit is already complete. You're one-third resurrected already. Your spirit's never going to get any better than it is right now tonight. Mm -hmm. What needs improving is our yielding our minds to the spirit and ignoring the flesh. And by ignoring the flesh, I mean ignoring the emotional pull to do wrong things. Mm -hmm. Or the emotional pull to not believe. I think that's the most dangerous part about the flesh is that it doesn't believe. And without faith, you can't please God. Mm -hmm. So that to me is the thing to really resist is that uh, temptation to not believe or to try to just, I'll just do it myself. You know? Oh, brother. You know? Amen. Anyway. Your spirit, man, can train your mind to think right. And release the power to resist the flesh. Romans 8, 5. You cannot have a positive life in a negative mind. You can't be somebody, who, a negative, I've never seen a, a, a successful negative person. Mm -hmm. Negative people are, are successful, the only thing they're successful at is being negative. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... Romans 8, 5. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. When it says those who live according to the flesh set their minds, it's talking about mindsets mm -hmm. right there. Some, a way of thinking. Amen. We have to train the way we think with an intensified determination that we're going to change because when we come into this new open door opportunity time that's coming we have to have a new renewed mind Amen. you have to have a positive outlook and I know that's not easy some of us have been out of work two months three months uh, some of us have been sick some of us have uh, you know we're just under terrible financial pressure. And on top of all that, everybody's home cooped up in the house all day and all night. <laughs> yeah. Now, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you love them, your family, but boy, sometimes you'd like to get someplace and do something, right? Mm -hmm. huh. I mean, there's, no matter how much you love them, you'd like a little mm -hmm. me time, right? And, and so that's getting harder and harder to do and it's rare it's weighing on people's nerves sometimes mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so this is it we can't have this negativity it's easy to get negative mm -hmm. especially now with so much going wrong mm -hmm. you can be negative about everything mm -hmm. about the church about the government about where you work about mm -hmm. your boss about your wife about your husband mm -hmm. About your kids you know shut up <laughs> yeah <laughs> and think on good things mm -hmm. thank God I'm alive amen thank God I've got a place to live that's right thank God I, I, the kids are home they're not out on the street doing what I don't know what amen amen thank God my wife's here amen. thank God she's in the kitchen making me amen. breakfast there you go hallelujah amen amen quit mm -hmm. it and have an intensified determination mm -hmm. to look look at things the way God sees them, mm -hmm. to think the way God wants you to think, mm -hmm. renew your mind with the Word of God, Amen. rise up in strength, and fight back. Amen. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know what? I'm, if Very the good. devil takes me, he's not going to take me sitting down. Mm -hmm. He's not going to take you, period. No, he's not. Amen. We can do all things through Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay, so I'm an Adler. So it is. <laughs> yeah. Amen. God does not consult your past in determining your future. Amen. That's right. All right? Amen. Here's a mind-blowing fact about God. 
He put together a plan for your life, for my life, for how the world was going to operate, how the kingdom of heaven was going to uh, operate, how the kingdom of hell was going to operate, every little, right down to the minute detail, he has planned. Mm -hmm. And everything in his plan is going to come to pass. Yes, amen. Right down to the smallest molecule mm -hmm. is going to obey him. In the midst of all that, we have free will. Mm -hmm. Now, I've tried for years to try to figure out how he does that. <laughs> and here's how he does it. He's eternal. Amen. He always has been, and he always will be. Mm -hmm. God doesn't consult your past because he, he knew about it before it was your past. Amen. God does not consult the past to determine your future. Memories are more enslaving than any injustice. We've seen that in the past many times. Past memories hold people captive in emotional states. That's right. And they spring up in your life. Mm -hmm. It's almost like they have a life of their own. Mm -hmm. And they invariably come along just when it's time for you to advance spiritually. And so we have this up and down, up and down, up and down experience. Mm -hmm. What you focus on will determine your future. Your words are the seeds of your feelings. Mm -hmm. I said your words are the seeds of your feelings. Mm -hmm. How you feel, husbands and wives, how you feel about each other. You know, some of you have just been married, recently married. Some of you have been married as long as we have. Some of you have been married longer than we have. Mm -hmm. How you feel about each other is how you talk to each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so your words, how you feel about your job is how you talk about your job. Amen. How you feel about where you live is affected by how you, your feelings are affected by what you talk about. What you focus on will be drawn to you. Mm -hmm. You need to write that down. Mm -hmm. What you focus on is going to be drawn to you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Remove the wrong people from your life and 80% of your problems will go away. What do you think of that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Never give as much time to a critic as you would to a friend. There are, you're, a good friend will tell you when he thinks you're making a mistake. Linda tells me when she thinks I'm making a mistake. But she isn't on my butt all day every day either. You follow what I'm saying? My mother was like that. If she asked me to do something, I got up and did it. Mm -hmm. And it drove my father right out of his mind. <laughs> he used to tell my mother, she said, Mom, I tell that boy to do something, he'll argue with me for three days about it, and then he'll do it. Mm -hmm. So you tell him something, and he gets right up and goes out and does it. Mm -hmm. And that's true, and there was a reason for that. Mm -hmm. He was on my back all day, every day. My mother never, ever said anything to me unless she had been thinking about it for a long time and it was very important to her. Mm -hmm. And that's why I always made sure I did what she wanted right away. Mm -hmm. So I'm not recommending you ignore your father. I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah. But you never give as much time to a critic as you would to a friend. Go where you're wanted and celebrated and not just tolerated. We have to ask the Holy Spirit for a lot of help daily. Mm -hmm. This cannot be done in our own efforts. We must rely on His grace. It was designed to work that way. There isn't anything we're doing for God or can do for God that doesn't require his presence and his grace. And this battle will take persistence, 
and an intensified determination to see results. Mm -hmm. But we are linked to an unlimited source of power if we will just yield to it. The power is available. We just yield to it. Mm -hmm. The light in the lighting this ministry time, it's working because it's plugged in. If it wasn't plugged in, you wouldn't get any light. Mm -hmm. If you don't plug in to God, you're not going to get any light. Yes, amen. <laughs> That's good, yeah. So, we have to have an intensified mm -hmm. determination where you're linked to an unlimited source of power. Mm -hmm. But we have to plug into it by yielding to it. Mm -hmm. Satan knows that as long as he can control our thought life, he can control our words and us. The reason we fail is because of a broken focus. And staying centered on what God has for us, mm -hmm. we let our minds focus on something else. Mm -hmm. And the devil's a champ at that. He might be focusing on what God has told you to do, what he wants, and he puts all these exciting things out here that look like they're so much better. Uh, turn with me to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. <clears throat> you there yet? I don't know why you're going to find the right tab. Mm. Here we go. 2 Corinthians. 2 <laughs> Corinthians okay. 10. I like my tabs. I know you do. Yeah. I put them on there. Yeah, very nice. Okay. 10. Go for it. Okay. 10. Yep, yeah, got 10. You got 10? Yeah. All right. And it's verse 12. Okay, thank you. For we dare not class ourselves or compare ourselves with those who commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves mm -hmm. among themselves are not wise. Yeah. Now notice this. Yeah. We don't classify ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in the early days of ministry, I had a real struggle with that. Uh, I always figured somebody whose church was bigger or had more people in it or more money or more uh, exalt was more exalted or something mm -hmm. was better than I was. Mm -hmm. And the Lord had to teach me this. Mm -hmm. Don't classify yourself or compare yourself with others. Amen. There's only one Jeff mm -hmm. that has one destiny mm -hmm. that God wants him to fulfill. Amen. And if I do that and do it well, I'll get as much reward as somebody who's got some big operation and only did the will of God half the time. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's right. There's only one person we have to please, and that's Jesus. Amen. That's it. He's that's the only one that's got to like that's it. That's all you got to do. Amen. Walk in your calling, please, Jesus. And any time we've tried to, we've had... Uh, helped somebody that was going to preach or teach for the first time. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things I always emphasized. Yeah, I know you want your respect. Nobody wants to look like a fool. Mm -hmm. I understand that. I don't. I'm sure you don't. Nobody wants to uh, fail. But the fact of the matter is, if what you did pleased Jesus, then you are successful. That's right. Amen. <laughs> Did you do what God said to do? Amen. Amen. Obey. Amen. Yes. And notice this. They were class, they didn't, they were comparing themselves with those who commended themselves. You know how many people commend themselves? Amen. Now listen, there's a place for that. If you're applying for a job or something, you need to commend yourself. Mm -hmm. Nobody else is going to do it for you. Mm-hmm. But this is talking about competition. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, they were commending themselves. You know, they were, mm -hmm. these guys commended themselves. And so we come, you know, we compare ourselves to that and we measure ourselves by that. And I tell you, that's a real burden. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad I'm over it. Amen. I really, that's, I handle that's it. Good. Yeah. Amen. You know, that's a good thing to get delivered from. Yes, it is. You know? Yeah. And they were measuring themselves mm -hmm. by themselves. 
Right. You know, the only judgment mm -hmm. that's going to matter is God's. Right. So why measure yourself by yourself mm -hmm. or with some special group or something? Mm -hmm. What I'm trying, I'm saying all this to you is this. Don't compare yourself to others. Mm -hmm. You will be happiest fulfilling your calling, not someone else's. Mm -hmm. Way back in the eons of time past, in the council room of God, a plan was made just for you. Mm -hmm. You don't need to compare yourself to anybody else. Amen. God's not. That's right. Amen. He's not comparing you to anybody else. Praise God. <laughs> oh, cool. Amen. Boy, are we happy about that yeah, or what? Yeah, amen. Amen. And so, enjoy your life. Enjoy your ministry. Amen. Are you listening to me? Mm -hmm. All right. So, and also know this. Not all results of your ministry are visible. Yes. You don't see everything you prayed for, everything you ministered to. We've mm -hmm. given people a word, and two mm -hmm. years later, they come back and tell us what happened. Right, amen. You know, we're always glad to hear it, mm -hmm. you know, because it's encouraging. Amen. Uh, but you're not always going to know the results or see mm -hmm. the results. Right. The Bible says, lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Mm -hmm. You know, I wish I could say I had a 100% batting average, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. But I don't know all the results from, all I did was obey the word. The word Amen. says lay hands on the sick, say the prayer of faith, and they'll be healed. That's right. That's my part. Mm -hmm. The healing, that's God's part. And the, and the ministry receiver, it's up to them to believe. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So don't get wrapped around the axle because you don't see any results necessarily. Uh, there, one time in Kentucky, I was... Uh, visiting this church, uh, their people were uh, friends of ours, and it was like a normal church service, you know, I mean, singing and preaching, and at the end, you know, I ministered prophetically, and, and then I had a prayer line, I laid hands on people who were sick, and there was this lady there that, she was very sick, she was dying from cancer, and so I laid hands on her and prayed for her, Mm -hmm. Got on the plane, came home and all that, and uh, didn't know it for almost three years that that woman was completely healed. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I wish Praise that God. happened all the time. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Amen. But you see, I didn't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. And understand this, you can't help those who don't want to do the work to change. Mm -hmm. You can't help people who are unwilling to change. James 1, 22. Mm -hmm. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. There's some that are professional, what I call professional pew sitters. <laughs> they hear the word and hear the word yeah. and hear the word and hear the word and hear. And thank God they do. Mm -hmm. But there comes a point where you got to do what you heard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Faith is, a, is action. Faith is action. Amen. You know, there's a, a difference between talkers, dreamers, and doers. Mm -hmm. and I have to say there's a lot of talkers and there's a lot of dreamers. But there are also those that are doers. And let me say this. You need to devote your ministry efforts to the ones that do. I'm not saying don't love the talkers and dreamers. I'm not saying not to pray with them. I'm not saying to give them advice if they ask you for it. Mm -hmm. I am saying is don't set your goal there. Mm -hmm. Set your goal on the people who want to change, mm -hmm. who want to be doers of the word. You know, God was in the wilderness for 40 years trying to get those Israelites, and not even he could make them change. Wow. He was grieved with them for 40 for years. For 40 years. Can you imagine being grieved with somebody for 40 years? Wow. He's God, and he was grieved for 40 years, not 40 days. For 40 minutes. Yeah. yeah. That's incredible. It is. Mm -hmm. Be led by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Follow your leading. Not other people's good ideas and reactions. Mm -hmm. Saints, the crowd is wrong 90% of the time. Yes. The crowd is usually wrong. Most people evaluate you by the flesh. 
Only God knows your full potential. Only God knows your full potential. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, if you've been near the cave of Adullam mm -hmm. and look at that bunch of guys that David had, you'd say, wow, forget it. Mm -hmm. But they turned out to be David's mighty men. Mm -hmm. And what was that one guy? He, he jumped in a pit on a snowy day with a lion. Mm -hmm. Benaniah. Benaniah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He jumps in a pit on a snowy yeah, day, snowy day and, and yeah. whacks out a, a lion. Yeah, he jumped in. <laughs> jumped in. <laughs> Most people want to jump out. <laughs> jump out. I'm not going near the pit. <laughs> really? <laughs> Let's climb out of here. He jumped in. He was one of David's mighty men. <laughs> that at one point he was broke, disgusted, and sad. Yeah. But he yeah. didn't stay that way. Be led by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Let Jesus and the Word promote you. Mm -hmm. Let Jesus and the Word promote you. Amen. There are many so-called success formulas mm -hmm. and shortcuts, mm -hmm. even in the ministry. And I'm here to tell you there is no such thing as a shortcut in the ministry mm -hmm. that's going to succeed. Let Jesus and the word promote you. 1 Peter 5, 6 says, Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, mm -hmm. that he might exalt you in due time. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you do that? Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. That's what being humble to God is. Mm -hmm. You cast all the care upon him. It doesn't mean you, you cast the care mm -hmm. today and tomorrow you pick it up again. And there's a tendency for all of us, myself included, to do that. Well, how do you pick up the care of it again? You start worrying about it. You start fussing about it. Mm -hmm. You start talking about it. If you roll that care over on the Lord, leave it there. Believe me, he's not nervous about it. Amen. Do we have a question? Oh, no. Mm -mm. Okay. Just, just checking the logistics. Okay. So I like scripture that when they make a statement, they explain how to do it. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. He's going to do the exalting Amen. in due time, casting all your care upon him, mm -hmm. for he cares for you. Just follow Jesus with all your heart and you'll be amazed where you end up. Amen. That's the truth. There's nothing about you that can stop God's blessing except your own unbelief. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that again. Mm -hmm. There's nothing about you that can stop God's blessings except your own unbelief. Mm -hmm. Neither your outward appearance nor your inward character can stop you from fulfilling your God-given destiny. I'm so tired of people making excuses. I did it for years. You know, I'm too tall, I'm too short, I'm too fat, I'm too skinny. Something. Mm -hmm. When it's just a matter of obedience. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Neither your outward appearance nor your inward character can stop you from fulfilling your God-given destiny. You have no personal shortcomings that God won't work with. Aren't we glad? Mm -hmm. Amen. I had plenty of shortcomings. Still do. But he's willing to work with me. Amen. We all are. Mm -hmm. Be willing to pay the price. Be willing to pay the price, dying to your self-will and your self-motivation. Many give up just before the breakthrough. Don't be circumstance wooled. Satan can manipulate circumstances. 2 Corinthians 4.16 Therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, Yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. It's very important that you have the right, the, how you think about yourself. It's so important 
to understand that we're made in God's image. Now, I'm going to give you something that's going to help you. And it's this. Every day when you look in the mirror in the morning, just point your finger at that mirror and say, there is someone made in God's image. Amen. There is someone made in God's image. Mm -hmm. Genesis 1.26, And God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So ladies, you are created in the image of God. Amen. Now I wish we had time tonight to go into what does that mean, the image of God. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> just suffice it to say, there's characteristics that we have that God has. Mm -hmm. We can love people. Mm -hmm. Amen. We can make wise decisions. Mm -hmm. Amen. We can't do it like he does, but we can. Mm -hmm. We share certain of his characteristics. Did you ever see a dog make a wise decision? Mm -hmm. Even as smart as Mitzi is, she doesn't make wise decisions. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. You know, she's barking and barking and barking. Mm -hmm. So I told her, shut up! And what do you think? Oh, I'm sorry, my bad. <laughs> no, she barks even louder. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. So how you see yourself is vital to a victorious life. You have to see yourself that you were made in the image of God. Mm -hmm. It's a limitation when we believe the, the lie that you can never amount to anything. You know how many people are living that lie? That, oh, I can't amount to anything. And dear God, parents, don't ever tell your children that. Mm -hmm. Especially if I hear it. Because I was told that myself. Mm -hmm. And I know what it's like to live with it. Thinking to yourself, oh, you'll never amount to anything. Well, the fact of the matter is, I have amounted to something. Amen. By God's grace. By amen. God's it's grace. Amen. Hard work. By God's grace. A lot of hard work. <laughs> yes. But I came mm -hmm. through to a fair, a fair uh, what I would call a successful place. Amen. 2 Timothy 1 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You're made in the image of God. Your worship is the only thing the devil despises more than the fact that you've been made in the image of God. He mm -hmm. will do anything to destroy your self-image and confidence. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that's rough about divorce. Mm -hmm. It damages your self-image. Mm -hmm. You know? Yes. Mm -hmm. Some of us were raised in a very harsh environment. Some of us had very strict parents that left us with feelings of unworthiness and inadequacy. Mm -hmm. This is what can make the love of the Father so hard to believe. Mm -hmm. There are saved and unsaved people that we love, and even people we don't love, that are only too quick to point out our sins, mm -hmm. shortcomings, and failures. Mm -hmm. It takes a strong spirit we have to have an intensified determination mm -hmm. to overcome this negative world. Mm -hmm. And this world is negative. Mm -hmm. When you look at the news, are they on there telling you about all the good things that happened today? <laughs> mm -hmm. And here's one. The politicians would like nothing better than to have you believe you can't make it without them. Now, I'm not saying the government isn't helpful or that it isn't necessary, but you know what? With them or without them, God's going to put me over. 
Yep, he's going to put us all over. Yes, amen. 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 If God be for us, government's so not our source. Amen. Jesus is. That's right. Amen. 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 So that concludes tonight's message. Mm -hmm. Amen. And uh, with that, I'm going to close this out. Would you like to close it in a word of prayer, Linda? Yeah, okay. Praise God. Father, we just thank you for the wisdom tonight. There's a lot of wisdom tonight. Amen. A lot of instruction, a lot of uh, good spiritual tips. Father, we just, um, we just thank you, Father, for this night, Father. And Lord, we just ask, Father, that you would just stir your people tonight. Father, that, Lord, you as you gave them ears to hear, uh, Father, that there was something in this message tonight that spoke to them that is going to encourage them, going to help them, Father, Amen. and give a new hope and a new vision, Father, and, and a new determination, amen, to keep, to keep going. And, Father, we just thank you, Lord. We just seal the word tonight. In Jesus' name, we release it to the people. We charge them with it, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise God. Okay, okay thank you, honey. Very good. Right. Amen. So we're going to uh, switch now into our pr prophetic part. Amen. And uh, before we do that, I just uh, got inspired as Apostle Jeff was speaking. Uh, I just want to uh, take you into 2 uh, Timothy uh, 4 7, just for a second. Amen. And um, actually, it's 4, let's see, 4 7, right? 2 Timothy 4 7. And it says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And then verse 8 says, Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all those who have loved his uh, appearing. And what I love about verse 7, I just want to share with you tonight, he fought the good fight and finished the race. Amen? We want to fight the good fight and finish our race. Whatever God has called you to do, amen, that's what we're here for, to encourage you, amen, to strengthen you, amen, so that you fight the good fight, amen, and finish that race. Whatever God has called you to do, again, whatever he's called you to do, finish it, amen. And we even impart and release what we call the finishers on anointing, amen. And it's, you know, everything's by faith. And so we just release on people that what, you know, the calling that they're walking in, that they're going to finish it, that they're not going to fall short, that they're not going to get tired, amen, that you're not going to give up. You just keep going, amen. And so intensified determination means you're, you're determined that you're going to fight that good fight and, and finish the whatever God has given you, amen. So, Father, we just stir everybody up tonight in Jesus' name, Father. And, Lord, we release that finisher's anointing. Amen. For all those that are listening tonight, you just want to raise your hand tonight. Father, I just release that finisher's anointing. Amen. That they're going to have a determination in their spirit to keep going. Amen. And, Lord, I just thank you, Father. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in all of our lives, Lord God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And we just seal that word in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. And, you know, you can pray that in, too. You can ask the Lord to give you that determination to keep going. You can stir yourself up, amen, and ask the Lord to anoint you again and give you a freshness that you will keep going. You know, I was talking to someone the other night, uh, you know, about a particular job, and they were trying to get a leading on whether or not they should uh, put a resume out and, and ask, for a, ask the Lord for a new job. And in, during, the, during the dialogue, I said to the person, I said, well, I said, you know, what do you believe God is saying? Well, they weren't quite sure. And, uh, and even as I was talking with them, uh, I, I was having a, a neutral, what I call a neutral feeling on it, meaning that they really had their choice. God was going to help them either way. And so I said, well, you know, many times we don't give up a, a, a job that we have right now until we have another one. You know, wisdom says, unless you're, Unless you've got money saved up and you know you can pay your bills for an extended period of time, you want to be very careful about giving up a job before you have another one. And the person said, well, I'm not sure I really like the job. And so the, the Lord quickened me to just tell that person, you know, stir yourself up and ask the Lord to help you like the job that you're on right now until God gives you another one. Amen? I had to do that many times when I was in the, in the Army. There, there were bosses and jobs that I, I really didn't like. And I, you know, and I had a mandate to be in the army. And so I had to stir myself up and ask the Lord 
to help me, uh, you know, fulfill that assignment with joy. Amen. Because we work heartily as unto God, not unto man. And so we can ask the Lord. So I just want to share with you tonight that, you know, you can, you have not because you ask not. You can ask the Lord for anything. Praise God. He's God. Amen. So I'm not sure who that was for tonight, but I just, that just popped out. Amen. So I just wanted to, you know, just encourage you tonight. Okay. The Lord is with us. Praise God. And, and, and he is near us. And all we got to do is cry out to him, no matter what the situation is. Praise God. He can help. Amen. So with that, we're going to shift into the pr prophetic. Amen. So Father, we just, again, we seal the word in Jesus name. Amen. Uh, all right. This uh, first word is for Consuelo. Amen. Consuelo, thank you for joining us tonight. Amen. Father, we just thank you for the wisdom and for the counsel that has gone forth tonight. Father, for the actually these are the words of good counsel. Amen. And wisdom. And so, Father, we just stir up Consuelo right now. And the Lord says, Daughter, I'm with you. And God says, I have not abandoned you, says the Lord. And the Lord says, The enemy would even have you think that I've rejected you. But God says, uh, I have not rejected you in any way, shape, or form. I am mightily with you, says the Lord. And you're an intercessor of intercessors, says God. And there has been many people that have been blessed through your intercession, says the Lord. And I put even a governmental calling upon your life, uh, says God. And the Lord says that there is a great level of authority in the spirit realm that I've even called you to, says God. And the Lord says that as you get in that prayer closet and as you continue to seek my face, the Lord says you're going to see a manifestation even of that anointing in great ways. Uh, says the Lord, not only upon your life, but upon the people that you're with. And the Lord says that I'm even reaching down into your immediate family, says God. And the Lord says that I'm doing a healing work within your immediate family, says the Lord. And I see also, uh, Consuela, there's some uh, relatives and different things that you have in other other parts of the of the world. And the Lord says that he's touching them according to your prayers, that he hears your prayers and he is responding. And the Lord says that there's been some medical illness also within the uh, family. And the Lord says that I'm touching even several members of your family, even right now tonight. Amen. God is touching them in a brand new way. And the Lord says, even within your own body, the aches and pains that you've been experiencing, the Lord says, even right now, I am touching your body. For by his stripes, we are healed. And I release that healing anointing, not only into her body, but even into the family members that also need it. And the Lord says that I am providing all your need according to my riches and glory, says the Lord. And so the Lord says, I want you to stand in faith and continue to stand, says God, having done all to stand. Because the Lord says that there is provision that is available to you, says God. And I am even causing people to give unto your bosom, says the Lord. So the Lord says, stand fast in the liberty wherewith I have made you free, says God. Amen. And the Lord says, uh, do not re return even to old mindsets, uh, says the Lord, for the enemy would even have you look back. He would have you look back. But the Lord says, I want you to remember even the blessings that I've already done for you and the family, says God. Remember the good things, says God. Remember the blessings that have already taken place and the miracles that you've already received, says the Lord. And the Lord says, think on good things. Think on those things says God, and continue to build your faith by reading the word and being in the spirit, says God, and praising my name. And the Lord says, surely you will see even the walls of Jericho come down all around you, says God. And that provision that you have been seeking shall be made available to you, says the Lord. So praise my name and rejoice in me, says God, for I'm a great God and I am near to you and I'm responding to all that you've asked for, says the Lord. So, Father, we release that provision to her right now, to her and her family, in the name of Jesus, and we stir them up in the prophetic uh, right now, in Jesus' name, and we release that healing also to the members of her family, and I bind and rebuke those aches and pains that are in her body, even our arthritis that come against our brightest in her body right now, in the name of Jesus, and there's been some joint pain that's been associated with our arthritis, and I break the power of that right now, in the name of Jesus, and I command it out of your body, in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we seal the word over her and we charge it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Okay, this next word is for uh, Shiner Harper. Uh, forgive me if I said that wrong. Amen. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I, Lord, I just lift up my sister to you right now in Jesus' name. And, Father, we just thank you uh, for all that you're doing in her life. And the Lord says, Daughter, I am doing a new work. 
in your life. And the Lord says, I want to remind you that this is 2020. This is the year 2020. And in, in this year, says God, I am doing a new work within the body of Christ. And I'm doing a new work even within your ministry, says God. And the Lord says, I've called you with a great calling. And the Lord says, I'm expanding and enlarging your tent pegs in this season. And even tonight, as you, as you heard uh, the apostle talk about the open door, the Lord says, it, it was, it was, it's a blessing, but the Lord says there was also a, a warning there, says God, that the enemy is at the door. The enemy is at the door to try to block you from going through the door. And so the Lord says you must per persevere. And, and the Lord says that even the things that were spoken tonight in this message were for you, says God. The Lord says you must have an intensified determination that you're going to go all the way, that you're going to go through the doors of opportunity, says God. For the enemy is surely trying to block you. But the Lord says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Amen? And the, and the Lord says if you resist the devil, he will flee. So the Lord says push down the door in the spirit and command it to be open in Jesus' name. For as you resist the devil, he will flee, says God. And so the Lord says I have granted you the open door in this season, says God. Take the open door and walk through it, says God. For my blessings are great. And my promises are forever, says the Lord. And so the Lord says, I will not fail you, says God. Amen. I am with you all the way, says the Lord. And so, but the Lord says, faith without works is dead. And so faith has action, says God. And so the Lord says, even as the opportunities are coming, seek my face and, and get the confirmation in your spirit that you need. And the Lord says, surely I will give you the confirmation accordingly. And the Lord says, then you will walk through, says God. And I'll give you even the strategy in this hour for how to walk through. For the Lord says, I'm with you mightily, says God. Amen. And sister, you have, a, you have a prophetic call upon your life, which means that you're sensitive to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And the Lord wants to even raise you up more in the gifts of, of the Holy Spirit. And I hear the Lord say that you're, you've already been used in some of them, but the Lord says he wants to increase that in this season. Amen. And so he's enlarging your ten pegs. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just stir her up in the prophetic apostolic right now. In Jesus' name, I thank you for all the revelatory gifts and the power gifts are also in, in your life. Amen. We're going to call you forth to the office of the prophetess right now. In the name of Jesus, we call you forth in Jesus' name. We release and we stir you up right now. And I see the fire of the Holy Spirit coming upon you. Amen. In Jesus' name, is going to recharge you and re-energize you in this season. And so, Father, I just bind every every form of fear that's been trying to attack your mind intimidation even witchcraft i bind it right now in jezebel control manipulation python i bind you in jesus name there's been a python spirit around you trying to squeeze the life out of you and i break the power of that thing right now you get off of her get off in the name of jesus and i release a healing also even in the places where the enemy has tried to attack your mind father we release a healing right now in jesus name and we charge her and we uh, release that ministry call and that ministry anointing for another level in Jesus' name. And health and healing right now and provision to go with the ministry will come forth in Jesus' name. And we just charge her right now and we release that in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. This word is for Sheree Hubbard. Amen. All right. Sherry or Sheree? Okay. So, sister, in Jesus' name, we just stir you up right now. Amen. And the Lord says, daughter, I am stirring you in a new way. And God says, I'm bringing a health and a healing upon your body, even spirit, soul, and body. And the Lord says, if there's been some trauma in your, in your life up to this point, and the Lord says that even tonight, I'm going to pull that out, says the Lord, and I'm releasing a new healing. Amen. And I'm just hearing the healing balm of Gilead. The Lord is just smoothing some things over and he's putting some balm on you. Amen. Praise God. And, and he's just healing you up. So, Father, we just bind that spirit of trauma right now. I, I sense there's been like three separate major events. There's been some other little things, but there's three major events uh, that have traumatized you in various ways. And the Lord says even tonight, he's pulling out individually those spirits of trauma that have latched onto that. And God says, I'm doing a new work within your life. And the Lord says that you'll not look back. You're going to look forward to the things that I have for you, says God. Amen. And the Lord says remind you this is a new season amen he was even speaking to me this morning about that this is a brand new season amen behold everything is new praise god and the lord says even the things that used to nurture you from the old are not going to nurture you now because it's a brand new season and the lord says look in my word for the new things says god for the new hope for the new vision 
and the Lord says, seek my face. And the Lord says, even tonight, there's going to be that, that new uh, energizing by the Spirit, that new anointing level that's going to come upon you, amen, and, and energize you. And so the Lord says, continue to seek my face, says God. For the Lord says, I'm doing a new work in your life, and I'm healing you, says, says the Lord. And I love you, says God. And the, and the Lord says, you're not rejected, you're not abandoned, amen, you've not been left out, amen. And you, and, and you come behind in no gift. The Lord says, I've called you the great calling. And the Lord says, you have not because you ask not. So just ask, says God. Just ask me. And the Lord says, I'm going to promote you even in due season. And I'm going to stir that anointing afresh and anew within you, says the Lord. So, Father, I just bind those spirits of trauma right now in the name of Jesus. And we just pull them out, even of those three areas right now in Jesus' name. And I release a healing to you, spirit, soul, and body right now in the name of Jesus. And there's a new hope that's coming with that. Amen. There's a new hope because now you're, you're looking forward. You're going to look forward. Amen. You're going to look, amen, and think on good things. Amen. And Lord, just we just impart, we release a new vision and a new hope upon her right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I just thank you for it, Father. I thank you, Lord, for the work that you're doing in her life, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. And so, Father, and oh, I just heard the word ed education. Uh, so there's some kind of educational opportunity at some point i don't know if it's credentialing in something or what it is or even uh even uh prophetic education spiritual education amen so father we release that right now in jesus name we call her forward to it in jesus name and we charge her with it in jesus name amen praise god all right praise the lord this is uh for darian williams okay darian hi darian how are you tonight amen thanks for tuning in praise god uh father we just thank you right now Amen. For Darian and, and sister, I'm just hearing the Lord say, amen, to be encouraged tonight. Be encouraged. Uh, I, I'm just hearing that, that uh, the enemy has been trying to come against you with a depression and an oppression uh, because of the various, of the all the chaos that we're in here with this virus and other things going on in, in, in the world today. Amen. And, uh, you know, there's so much going on. And, and, you know, but the Lord says, look upon him. Look upon him and be encouraged tonight. The Lord says, I am with you. Regardless of what's going on on this planet, <laughs> the Lord says, I am with you. Amen. And I am for you and I am not against you. And the Lord says, if God be for you, who dare be against you? And so the Lord says, use my word. Amen. Use my name like you know to do. And, and Darian, I'm just hearing the Lord say, you're, you're a great woman of faith. Amen. And you know the word of God and you know how to apply the word of God. And so the Lord is just reminding you tonight. Amen to do what you know to do in the spirit realm. And the Lord says, I will push it through for you, okay? You don't have to worry what man or woman's opinion is or what the economy is doing or, or, or what the chaos is doing. The Lord says, I am your, I am your shepherd, says the Lord. And, and I, am, I am your deliverer and I am your healer. I am your Jehovah Jireh, says God. And I'm just getting for you, Darren, remember the names of God, how the names of God uh, and they, they even, they identify, amen, all the many aspects of, of, of our Lord. And he wants to remember that. He wants you to remember that. There's even a song, it, it, it's, it slips my mind now who sang it. Um, uh, but there is a song, it's the names of God. And I'm, I'm getting that for you. Uh, I believe it's on the U YouTube, you can find it. And it's kind of a long song because... They've got all kinds of names that are all scriptural based. And um, is it something Jackson? I don't know. But anyway, uh, the, the names of, of God, I just, I'm just i just hearing that that peace in my spirit. And um, so I encourage you, amen, to dig out that song on, on the YouTube and, and just build your faith on that. I mean, wow. I mean, there's so many aspects to our Lord. Amen. And, and the Lord says that you can tap in to all of that, right through the name of Jesus. And so the Lord says, do not be burdened, uh, says the Lord, about many things. But the Lord says, just even as you heard the word tonight, remember, amen, be anxious for nothing, right? But give it all to me, says the Lord. Just give it all to me, amen. Pray about it, says God, and give it to me, amen. And then I will even extend that peace upon you, says God. I will loose that peace upon you, says the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, I'm just even reminded of the, of the word uh, that says that 
uh, he will keep us in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon me. Okay, so the devil is trying to rob you of peace through all these different activities, these things that are going on even in the world today, okay, and, and all around. Okay? He's trying to rob you of that peace. And the Lord says, peace be still, and I am with you, says God. So, Father, we just release that peace right now upon Darian, Father. Uh, Lord, we just release even promotion I hear in the spirit realm. Right now, we release uh, even a, a new joy. I just bind any depression and oppression that would be coming against you right now in the name of Jesus. And I release a new joy, a supernatural spiritual joy upon you in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord, for it in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Father, we seal that word and we charge it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Okay, Pastor, you want to check for alibi fires, please, for me? Amen. And so, uh, amen, while I'm waiting on Pastor there, I just want to remind you, amen, if you're not on our mailing list, uh, please uh, chat your email in uh, into Pastor Andrea. She's on the other end there in our chat, and uh, we'll put you on our mailing list. Uh, we have a newsletter coming out uh, for this week pretty shortly. Amen. And uh, we've been putting out a weekly newsletter to update the people on what's going on and anything new in Covenant Life Church and also keeping you informed of when we're going to be back in the sanctuary. Amen. And uh, right now, uh, it's looking like uh, Father's Day uh, is going to be our first time back in the sanctuary. Unfortunately, uh, we are in Northern Virginia and our host church wants us to keep it down to 10 people or less yet. So we're still in phase one. And uh, we have to do 10 people or less. So unfortunately, uh, we won't be able to invite anybody into the sanctuary aside from our worship team. But uh, at least we're going to get worship going again. Praise God. Amen. Okay, Pastor, got it. Thank you. And uh, but So we're going to continue doing uh, live streaming with Facebook so you can continue to join us. Amen. Uh, starting on uh, Father's Day, it'll just be Sundays uh, only in, in the sanctuary. And then Friday night, we're still continuing to do table talk right here in our, our home. Uh, we also, so having said that, uh, this Sunday from 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time will be our uh, pr prophetic class. Amen. And uh, so uh, we want to uh, invite you to join in on our Zoom uh, from 1 to 2. Those of you who want to be stirred up more in, and activated in the gifts of the Spirit, amen. We, uh, we would invite you to join us from 1 to 2 in the afternoon, and that's all Zoom. And then 2.30 uh, 2 in the afternoon on Sunday, um, this Sunday, we'll be right here uh, doing Facebook Live. Apostle Jeff and I will, will be speaking again. And that's 2.30 Eastern Standard Time. Then Monday night, we have our discipleship course uh, from 8 to 9 p.m. And right now, we're in the prophetic phase. So we are teaching uh, the pro prophetic classes and stirring you up in the spirit. Amen. And so that's Monday night, 8 to 9 p.m. And then uh, Tuesday, we have Prayer Tabernacle at 7.30 p.m. And Pastor Andrea runs that, and she'll, she'll put out the dial-in number for you. Also, it's in our newsletter, and it's on our website. Amen. And then again, it's uh, Friday night is Table Talk, and, and then we're, we're back on, on Saturday. Praise God. So uh, we just want to invite you to tune in. Amen, and we thank you very much. Uh, also, uh, please take a look at our website, www.covenant-life-church.org. And also, we appreciate very much any donation uh, that you can send our way. There's a Donate button on our website, and uh, you can snail mail uh, the mail to us. Uh, a, a donation via P.O. Box, our P.O. Box, or uh, ACH, or PayPal, or whatever you can do, we appreciate very much. And meanwhile, we thank you for tuning in tonight. Amen. So on behalf of Apostle Jeff and I, amen, we want to thank you uh, for being with us for this table talk. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and close. Uh, so Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, Father, for this night. Father, we claim Psalm 91 right now, uh, that no uh, no plague will come nigh our dwelling. In Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And Lord, we just praise you tonight. We thank you for the opportunity of the social media. We thank you for all those that are listening. Uh, Father, we don't take it for granted. We, we thank you for the opportunity just to minister, Father, just to minister to your people. And we praise your name, Father. And we give you all the glory and the honor and the praise in Jesus' name. Now we seal the word right now and we charge it to the people in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Well, again, thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you on Sunday. Okay, bless you all.